Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome. Today's topic is Lakewood Park Cemetery. Famous People Tour. Okay, let's get started. Lakewood Park Cemetery is located on Detroit Road, Rocky River, Ohio, USA. Richard Jacobs, or Dick Jacobs, was born in Akron, Ohio. He was a businessman and real estate developer and Cleveland Indians owner. 1986 to 1999. Dick Jacobs was in the U.S. Army in World War II, went to U Indiana University, got a degree in 1949 in business administration. With his brother David, he built small strip malls, shopping malls. By 1992, they owned 40 enclosed shopping malls in the United States in 16 states and 31 Wendy's fast food restaurants, several Marriott hotels, the Key Tower in downtown Cleveland, and Westgate Mall in Rocky River. Um, where the Indians play baseball, Pro Progressive Field was known as Jacobs Field from 1994 to 2008, named after him and his brother. While he was owner of the Indians, they won two American League titles in 1995 and 1997. They also won five straight Cent American League Central Division titles between 1995 and 1999. He died in 2009, and his funeral was at the Rocky River United Methodist Church. When, it, when he and his brother bought the Indians in 1986, they really turned the team around. And the glory years in the late 90s, uh, we, owe a lot of, we owe a debt of gratitude to, to Dick Jacobs. God bless him. Neb Chandler, Cleveland area sportscaster, born in Lakewood, Ohio, died in Rocky River, Ohio in 1994 at age 47. Neb was in the Rocky River High School class of 1968. From 1980 to 1984, he was the Cleveland Indians radio broadcaster with Herb Score. And he was the Cleveland Browns radio voice from 1985 to 1993. His voice is depicted in the NFL films on the 1986 Browns called Pandemonium Palace. Chandler's ex uh, signature, ex uh, signature calls included 5 4 3 2 1 touchdown Browns. That was that would be from a long touchdown. And another one was they are serenading the team with a chorus of boo flat. That's when the fans were booing the Cleveland Browns poor performance. Nev Chandler was a fan favorite. He was a because of his quality performance. And he was the choice for a number of NFL film productions. Nev Chandler. Jess Bell. Jess Bell was a fitness advocate Bonnie, and the chairman of Bonnie Bell. He was a marathon runner, a member of the President's Council on Fitness, a pioneer in the fitness field. He introduced fitness programs for his employees at Bonnie Bell starting in the 1970s. His company offered on-site workout facilities, track and a weight room and an exercise program for employees at, his lake, at the Lakewood headquarters of Bonnie Bell and the Westgate plant. He encouraged his workers to work out, lose weight, and stop smoking, and gave them financial incentives to do so. Jess Bell started Bonnie Bell, the Bonnie Bell Women's Race Series in running, the first national running race series for women. In the late 1960s, he put fruit and candy flavors into his lip balm product called Lip Smackers, which became his most popular product. In 1997, he started having senior, a senior work program, hiring older adults, some in their 90s. Jess Bell founded Bonnie Bell in 1927 in Lakewood, Ohio. He was a cosmetic salesman and named his company after his daughter. He made products on a hot plate in his basement and sold skincare products door to door. His company aimed at the teenage market. He was best known for his line of astringents and cleansers named 1006. His lip smackers included uh, flavors in strawberry, green apple, and orange chocolate. Also, confectionery brands, Dr. Pepper, Mars, Coca-Cola, Disney, the Girl Scouts, and Disney characters. Jess Bell. John Patrick Butler. John Patrick, Patrick Butler was a trial lawyer and aide to two Cleveland
Cleveland Mayors. He attended the University of Notre Dame and played end during the Four Horsemen era. The Cleveland Mayors he served were Ray Miller and Thomas Burke. At Notre Dame, he was coached by the famous Newt Rockfee, Newt Rockney. The backfield on the 1924 football team were called the Four Horsemen. Quarterback Harry Stuhldreher, right halfback Don Miller, left halfback Jim Crowley, and fullback Elmer Layden. So John Patrick Butler, uh, Butler was on that team. For three years, the team that was called the, that had the nickname the Four Horsemen, from 1922 to 1924, for three years, Notre Dame only lost two games. Grantland Rice, a famous sports writer, after Notre Dame's 13-7 upset victory over a strong Army team, wrote in, on October 18, 1924, quote, outlined against a blue-gray October sky, the four horsemen wrote again. In dramatic lore, their names are death, destruction, pestilence, and famine. But those are aliases. Their real names are Stuldreher, Crowley, Miller, and Layden. They form the crest of the South Bend Cyclone, before which another fighting army team was swept over the pre precipice at the polo grounds this afternoon, as 55,000 spectators peered down upon the bewildering panorama spread out upon the green plain below. John Patrick Butler. James M. Carney, Sr. James M. Carney, M. Carney was a politician and developer. In the 1970s, he was called the most powerful man in Cleveland. He often performed philanthropic deeds. He was very compassionate and altruistic. His parents were Irish immigrants, and he survived the Depression. Carney was a lawyer and multi-millionaire developer, a Democratic Party power broker, and he grew up on the west side of Cleveland. His family had an excavating business. They dug basements with horse and wagon. He went to Holy Name High School and graduated in 1931, got a law degree at Western Reserve, and spent three years in the Army. He was elected to the Ohio Representatives. In downtown Cleveland, he developed the Hollanden House and the Bond Court Hotel, as well as the Ohio Savings Plaza. Mr. Carney ran for mayor twice in Cleveland and lost to Ralph Perk both times. He was the chairman of the Greater Cleveland Growth Association. He respected everyone, rich and poor. James M. Carney was very practical. He was tough as nails, a visionary, compassionate, committed to public service, very loyal, respectful, and a very kind man. James M. Carney. Joe Finan. Joe Finan was a disc jockey. He was from Butler, Pennsylvania. He served in the U.S. Navy from 1944 to 1945. He went to Carnegie Tech, which is now Carnegie Mellon. He was a weatherman in the early 1950s at KYW-TV, now WKYC-TV. He became a radio personality. Joe Finan worked with Bob Neal, Jim Grainer, and Dick Goddard. He became a top-rated disc jockey at KYW. He also worked at, in Denver at KTLN. He was the radio broadcaster for the Denver Broncos in 1960. He was at WNIR in radio in Akron, Ohio. He retired in 2004. He died in 2006 at age 79 from complications from surgery. Joe Finan. Jim Hendy. Jim Hendy was an ice hockey historian writer, historian, and statistician. He was born in Barbados in the British West Indies in the Caribbean. He's in the Pro Hockey Hall of Fame. Jim Handy developed a stati statistical methods to track professional hockey players and team performance, which has been used uh, since the 1930s up, up until now. He spent time living and working in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and New York City. Early on, he submitted statistics to Western Union and became a sports writer. He was the general manager of the Cleveland Barons in the American Hockey League from 1949 to 1961 and won three championships, three Calder Cup titles. He was executive of the year twice for the American Hockey League and was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1968. Jim Hendy. 
Danny Dunn. Danny Dunn was a boxing trainer, promoter, and manager. He was the cousin of Jimmy Dunn, who trained Johnny Kilbane from Cleveland, who became a boxing champion. Danny Dunn had his own gym at 2816 Detroit Avenue in Cleveland from 1926 to 1941. His, the best known boxer that he trained was Johnny Risco, a Slovak immigrant heavyweight boxer who in the 1920s and 1930s was a, was a top contender for the heavyweight crown. Danny Dunn. Sammy K. Sammy K was an American band leader and songwriter. His tagline was Swing and Sway with Sammy K. He was one of the most famous people of the big band era. His signature tune was Harbor Lights. Sammy K was born in Lakewood, Ohio. He graduated from Rocky River High School. Went to Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. Played the saxophone and clarinet. He started making records for Vocation Records, RCA Victor, and Columbia Records. He had hits on the radio, and one of his hits was an audience participation gimmick called So You Want to Lead a Band? After the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, Kay wrote the music and Don read the words to Remember Pearl Harbor. Sammy Kay was on TV shows in the 1950s, including the Sammy Kay Show on CBS television. When he died in 1987, his ma funeral mass was at St. Christopher Catholic Church in Rocky River. He was inducted into the Big Band and Jazz Hall of Fame in 1992 and has a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In the 1960 musical movie Bye Bye Birdie, there, there are lyrics in the song Kids that go like this, quote, why can't they dance like we did? What's wrong with Sammy Kay? Sammy Kay wrote a song called I Miss Your Kiss, which was released by the U.S. War Department as a V-disc in May 1945 for American troops overseas. Sammy Kay. George Ewell. George Ewell was an MLB professional baseball player. His career in the major leagues was from 1919 to 1934. Ewell was from Cleveland, Ohio. He died in Lakewood, Ohio in 1985 at age 86. In his pitching career, he won 200 games, lost 166, with an ERA of 3.99 and 1,135 strikeouts. Ewell pitched for the Cleveland Indians from 1919 to 1928 and in 1936. He also pitched for the Detroit Tigers, New York Giants, and New York Yankees between 1929 and 1934. He won a World Series title with the Cleveland Indians in 1920. Two-time American League win leader in 1923 and 1926. Lifetime batting average of 289, which is a record for pitchers. On May 29, 1929, he pitched 20 innings in a game and won 6-5 against the Chicago White Sox. Babe Ruth said that George Ewell was the tough pitcher he ever faced. George Ewell. Herb Score. Herb Score was a professional baseball pitcher and baseball announcer. He was born in Brooklyn, New York and died in Rocky River, Ohio in 2008 at age 75. His career record as a Major League Baseball pitcher, he won 55 games, lost 46 with an ERA of 3.36 and 837 strikeouts. Pitch, Herb Score pitched for the Cleveland Indians from 1955. 1959 and the Chicago White Sox from 1960 to 1962. He was a two-time All-Star in 1955 and 1956 and American League Rookie of the Year in 1955. He was a two-time American League strikeout leader in 1955 and 1956. Herb scores in the Cleveland Indians Hall of Fame. He was the Cleveland Indians TV and radio broadcaster from 1964 to 1997. That's the longest of any anyone to do that job. When he was three years old, he was run over by a truck. He had rheumatic heart fever as a, as a child. His lifelong friend was Rocky Calavito. On May 7, 1957, he was pitching against the New York Yankees at Cleveland Municipal Stadium. In the first inning, Gil McDougal of the Yankees hit a line drive that hit Score in the face, broke his facial bones, and injured his eye, although he said his career was not affected by it. 
After he retired in 1997 as a radio broadcaster, the following year, 1998, he had a, he was in, had a severe injury from a car accident with trauma to the brain, chest, and lungs. However, by 1999, he threw out the first pitch at opening day for the Cleveland Indians. 2002, he had a stroke. His 34 years as tribe announcer is the longest all time. He was revered by Cleveland Indians fans for his announcing style, low voice, low key style, and the habit of occasionally mispronouncing opposing players' names. His last game broadcasting for the Cleveland Indians was Game 7 of the 1997 World Series. Herb score! Larry Twitchell. Larry Twitch Twitchell was a pro baseball player. He was an outfielder. Twitchell was from Cleveland, Ohio. He died in Cleveland in 1930 at age 66. Career average of 263 with 19 home runs and 30, 384 RBIs. Twitchell played for the Detroit Wolverines, Detroit Wolverines, the Cleveland Spiders in 1889, the Cleveland Infants in 1890, also the Buffalo Bisons, Columbus Solons, Washington Senators, and Louisville Colonels between 1886 and 1894. Twitchell won a World Series title in 1887 with the Detroit Wolverines. He went to Oberlin College and played baseball there. In 1921, he appeared at an old-timers game in Cleveland and played with Cy Young, Chief Zimmer, Napoleon Lajoie and Elmer Flick. Larry Twitchell. John S. Ray. John S. Ray was from Marion, Ohio. He died in Rocky River, Ohio in 2011. He was the 1959 Cleveland Young Man of the Year. Most outstanding Young Man of the Year. He was also the lawyer in the Peter Beebe Episcopal Church, Episcopal Church Court case. He won that case which allowed women to become Episcopal ministers. He was the president of the United World Federalists, president of the Cleveland Junior Chamber of Commerce. John S. Ray graduated from high school at Warding, Warren Harding High School in Marion, Ohio, 1942. He went to Oberlin College on a full scholarship, an Amos Miller Scholar, and studied chemistry and graduated in 1946. He worked in Cleveland at the DeBeckman Company as a chemist. In 1951, he got his law degree from Cleveland Marshall Law School. He was a founding partner of the Myers, Stevens, and Ray law firm in the, in the Superior Building on East 9th and Superior, along with Kent Myers and Dick Stevens. Later, that law firm changed its name to Myers, Hanneman, Schneider, and Ray. As a boy, he became a, 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 an Eagle Scout. He worked for the Beechcliff Trust in Rocky River. For the Feder he was in the Federation of Insurance Council and was the Federation Flyer Editor. He had property on Cistern Key in the Exuma of the Bahamas. He also met John Wayne spoke with, and spoke with President Lyndon Johnson. In 1956, he went to the Melbourne Olympics in, the Melbourne, in Melbourne, Australia with the Junior Chamber of Commerce and met Jesse Owens. He was also my father, a very good man, very kind, responsible, hardworking, patient, and peaceful. John S. Ray. Ruth Smallshaw Ray. Ruth Smallshell Ray was from Estevan, Saskatchewan, Canada. She died in 2014 in Rocky River, Ohio. She graduated from high school in 1942 at Scott Collegiate High School in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. She taught, she taught school at the Saskatoon School for the Deaf from 1943 to 1946. She also taught deaf, deaf children in St. Augustine, Florida from 1946 to 1948. Then she came to Cleveland and worked at the Alexander Graham Bell School for the Deaf and taught there from 1948 to 1952. She got her college degree in 1951 from Western Reserve and became a well-known watercolor artist. She married John S. Ray in 1950 and became the mother of four children, Mark, Pamela, Patricia, and Peter. She had art shows every year at the Barton Center in Lakewood. She had, she had Christmas car, um, she had paintings that were used for many Christmas cards for the Cleveland Society for the Blind and also for the 1994 Easter Seals. She was also my mother, very kind, interesting, creative, and loving woman, Ruth Smallshaw Ray. Pamela Ruth Ray. Pamela Ray was from Cleveland, Ohio. She died in 1971 on Cistern Key in the Exumas, Bahamas at age 16. She played uh, cello in the Rocky River High School Orchestra in Rocky River, Ohio. She was in the Girl Scouts 
went to Mexico and sold 1,000 geraniums for a fundraiser and earned the Golden Geranium Award for that achievement. She was very active in the environmental movement, worked as a candy striper in local nursing homes. She was a very outstanding student, hardworking, outgoing, energetic, funny, and enthusiastic. She was a wonderful person and my sister, Pam Ray. Louis B. Seltzer. Louis B. Seltzer was a journalist and editor-in-chief of the Cleveland Press newspaper from 1928 to 1966. He was one of the most powerful people in Cleveland during his time. They called him Mr. Cleveland. The Cleveland Press was called a fighting paper. And their motto was that they would fight like hell for the people. Seltzer supported Cleveland mayors Anthony Celebrezzi and Frank J. Lausche, who became Ohio governor and U.S. senator. They called Seltzer a kingmaker for his political influence. He was born in Cleveland and experienced a childhood of poverty. At age 12, he stopped war school and started working for the Cleveland leader, Louis B. Seltzer. Vernon Stouffer. Vernon Stouffer owned a national chain of restaurants, motor inns, and food service operations. He also owned the Cleveland Indians from 1966 to 1972. He played a key role in the development of frozen foods and microwavable foods. Stouffer graduated from the Wharton School in 1923. In 1971, he turned down an offer from George Steinbrenner to buy the Cleveland Indians, and in 1972 sold the team to Nick Maletti. Vernon Stouffer. Charles H. Hubble. Charles H. Hubble was a commercial aviation artist. He painted 500 paintings, which many are part of the Western Reserve Historical Society's Crawford Auto Aviation Museum collection. Hubble was born in Lakewood, Ohio. He graduated in, from Lakewood High School in 1916 and then went to Hiram College. During the First World War, he was in the N Naval Air Service. He went to the Cleveland School of Art and graduated in 1923. In 1927, he became a licensed pilot. In 1934, he was con commissioned by Thompson Products to paint the past winners of the Thompson Trophy Air Race. He also made a calendar series. He wrote and illustrated the 1939 book, Famous Planes and Pilots, and Record Brace Breakers in Air. His works are in the Smithsonian Institute, the Air Force Academy, and the Truman Museum. Charles H. Hubble. Art Sansom. Art Sansom was a comic strip artist. He created the long-running comic strip, The Born Loser, which is still being printed in newspapers. He was born in East Cleveland, got his art degree from Ohio Wesleyan University in 1942. He became an engineer and draftsman for General Electric. He created the comic strip, Chris Welkin, Planeteer with Russ Winterbotham, which ran from 1952 to 1964. In 1965, he created The Born Loser, assisted by his son, Chip Sansom, who is still running the, that comic strip, making new ones. In 1987, Art Sampson won the National Cartoonist Society Humor Comic Strip Award. In 1990, he won the Newspaper Comic Strip Award. Art Sam Sansom. David H. Jacobs. David Jacobs was a successful real estate developer. He bought the Cleveland Indians with his brother Richard in 1986, was a 25% owner, and Richard owned 75% of the team. In 1954, with his brother Richard, they opened a general contracting company. By 1992, their company ranked fourth in the United States in the management of shopping malls. He grew up in Akron, Ohio. In the Second World War, he served in the anti-submarine Navy blimps. Dave Jacobs graduated from the University of Akron in 1947. His company built the Galleria Mall, Mall down in downtown Cleveland. And a fi the 57-story Society Center, the tallest building between New York City and Chicago. Dave Jacobs and his brother owned 40 regional enclosed shopping malls in 15 states, along with as well as hotels and restaurants in New York and New Jersey. Dave Jacobs. Clint Brown. Clint Brown was a professional baseball player. 
He was from Black Ash, Pennsylvania and died in Rocky River, Ohio in 1955 at age 52. He was a pitcher and his career record in the major leagues was 89 and 93 with an ERA of 4.26 and 410 strikeouts and 64 saves. He pitched for the Cleveland Indians from 1928 to 1935, the Chicago White Sox from 1936 to 1940, and the Cleveland Indians from 1941 to 1942. He was mostly a relief pitcher. In 1939, he finished 11th in the MVP voting in the American League. In the minor leagues, he played for the Harrisburg Senators and the New Orleans Pelicans. Clint Brown. Doris J. Urbanski. Doris J. Urbanski was the founder of Miller's Dining Room in a Lakewood restaurant that was open from 1950 to 1995 when it burned down. Reportedly, they used a thousand pounds per week of brown sugar for their sticky buns, which were extremely popular and the customers ate, ate an average of two apiece. Doris and her husband Tom worked 16 hour days at the Miller's dining room and the, the most favorite entree in the restaurant was chicken a la king, Doris J. Urbanski. Dr. Ted Castell. Ted Castell was the United States first TV news doctor. They called him TV Ted or Dr. Ted. He lived a life dedicated to service. Castell, Dr. Castell said this, quote, I loved every minute of it. In my day during the Depression, our generation was trained to work, work, work. You just don't give up. You work till you drop. Dr. Castell was a radiologist at Lutheran Hospital. He was the first U.S. local TV doctor and worked for WEWS Channel 5 in Cleveland. He also appeared regularly on the morning exchange Afternoon Exchange and Live on Five. He was born in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. As a young guy, he became an Eagle Scout in the Boy Scouts. He was Assistant Air Raid Warden in World War II and served in the Navy in 1946. He went to Western Reserve at Delbert College and got an MD degree in 1957. Dr. Ted Castell. This concludes our Lakewood Park Cemetery Famous People Tour. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.